Well, Congressman, welcome back to the program. Hey, thanks, I'm glad to be here. Glad to have you with us. So, am I reading this right that Kevin McCarthy's demand, the, the, at least the only one that we know of so far, that first of all, over 200 pages of the 300 page uh, proposed legislation are entirely devoted to fossil fuel projects, more drilling, uh, more pipelines, you know, redo, uh, re-allow the Keystone XL, XL pipeline, ban future Republicans and governors from, from banning fracking, prevent them from doing that. It's basically a wish list for them. And he wants to put work requirements on basically all social welfare programs. Is, is this including Social Security? Uh, no, I don't think that, but I haven't seen that anywhere. You're, you're partially right as far as what he's got in there. He also wants us, uh, in addition to their bill, H.R. 1, which is like, you know, um, Christmas and your birthday and Hanukkah and everything put together in one gift for the uh, fuel, you know, the big oil industry. Uh, he has the work requirement issues, but he also um, has wants to go back to 22 levels of spending. Now, that sounds uh, innocuous, but uh, there's a lot more to it. Uh, it. In fact, if you think about it, and I think it's important to explain this, you know, when you look at government spending, a big, big, big chunk of it is uh, non-discretionary spending. That means we can't legally touch it. That Social Security and Medicare, for example, people's money they put into it, we're holding it as a public trust for when they need it. Remember, some Republicans wanted to make it discretionary so they could cut it, but you can't cut it right now because it's non-discretionary. That leaves discretionary funds. So out of this big uh, pile of, of of the federal budget, you're down to this. The Republicans have said they won't touch defense discretionary spending. That's over 50% of discretionary spending. What that leaves you with is this little piece that they wanna make all their cuts to to go back to 22 levels of spending, and that would be equivalent to a 22% cut. Now that includes veterans benefits, um, housing, education, healthcare, the border, uh, security, all sorts of things. So you think about the hypocrisy. You know, they pass a border bill, but uh, they also pass a bill that cuts funding 22 percent. Um, you know, it's just the problem really is the reason that there's negotiations even going on is they're trying to negotiate a budget and the debt ceiling at once because they can't put on paper their budget with these 22 percent of cuts because no one would ever accept it as a reasonable serious budget so the president the democrats have a budget out there and we're ready to deal with that through the appropriations process but because they can't put pen to paper because it would look so crazy to actually in incorporate those cuts because they'll say well i don't want to cut veterans or homeland well then that means 30 or 35 percent cuts for everything else right they can't even put that on paper they're trying to get around doing the hard work that we have to do which is pass a bill with those kind of details and try to incorporate it into some kind of negotiation so one they're holding us hostage the country hostage uh that could be very pricey and cost people jobs and increased interest rates for home buyers and small businesses and uh could make our stock markets tank uh, while they're playing this game of just not saying to their most crazy members, just look, you know, you're not being responsible. We have to govern. But because Kevin McCarthy won't do that, that's why we're in this so-called negotiation right now. Wow. We're talking with Congressman Mark Pocan. It's uh, Middays with Mark here. Uh, he will be taking your calls in a few moments at 202-808-9925. Uh, uh, Congressman, to what extent is, is Kevin McCarthy dancing to the tune of uh, what I call the Sedition Caucus, these guys who voted against aid for Ukraine, they parrot Putin's talking points, uh, you know, the, the, Paul Gosar, Marjorie Taylor Greene, Lauren Boebert, Andy Biggs, I mean, you, you, know the, you know the crowd, there's about a dozen of them that, that just seem like they're totally in the bag with Putin and, and completely interested in destroying America. Um, you know, my, my word's not yours, but um, to what extent are they driving this process? I, you know, several of them have come right out and told the press that they're perfectly willing to see a default. Yeah, right now he's their groupie, um, right? Because he gave away so many powers in order to have the business card that says he's a speaker, that he doesn't have some of the normal powers. And in that role, sometimes you have to be the adult and say to some of those more extreme folks, look, we have to pass a budget. We can't default on our debt. 
um, you know, if, if you buy a home, you can't decide whether or not to mail the mortgage check in because if you don't pay it, you lose your home and your, your credit's destroyed. It's no different for the federal government. So the fact that he doesn't stand up to them and allows them to be as outrageous as they are um, really means that, you know, they're kind of the tail wagging the dog right now. But we know there's Senate Republicans who say we got to be responsible. The only entity that's not being responsible are House Republicans. And, um, you know, until he changes that tune, uh, we're going to get closer and closer to a deadline. Yeah, yeah. And now uh, looking at the congressional calendar, there are, uh, you know, Janet Yellen has said J uh, June 1st. You know, roughly two weeks from now is the is D Day, you know, <laughs> or Death Day, um, and yet there's only I believe six business days for Congress between now and then, where both the House and Senate can act. Um, the last time we got this close was in 2011. The last time Republicans thought that they would use this uh, 1917 Liberty Bond Act to beat a, a Democratic president over the head. And, you know, they ultimately worked it out uh, at the last minute, but it caused a massive downgrading of the, the, the debt of the United States, which increased our interest payments, um, you know, further added to the budget deficit. Um, you know, uh, previous ones, they've, they've shut down the government for periods of time. I mean, how do you expect this to play out? Do you think that there's a real risk, not necessarily of a full-on default, but at the very least of serious damage being done to the United States by these guys? I mean, you know, absolutely. I think the June 1st date is a little bit soft in that like, it's probably within a week of that date. Um, today, we started uh, to sign a discharge petition. I was the 30th person to go down there. We need 218 members of Congress to sign a petition that would allow us just to do a clean debt ceiling lift like we've done 86 times previously, including three times uh, for, you know, for Donald Trump. Uh, we would need to get all 213 Democrats, which I think will happen, and you need to get five Republicans, just five Republicans who privately uh, have, have told us that they don't like what's going on. If they can just put their name to paper, we can force a vote. And quite honestly, it might be the the life raft that you know Kevin McCarthy needs right now because he's still you know appealing to that crazier element of his caucus. But you know, it's the responsible thing to do is pay your bills. Even if we didn't lift the debt ceiling, you wouldn't change spending at all because we've already spent the money that lifting the debt ceiling is all about. So it's it, so much of this rhetoric, I don't think many Republicans even understand what they're talking about. I serve on the Appropriations Committee, so I'm kind of living it right now. Um, but, you know, I think they're going to get very close to that deadline. But with this discharge petition, um, by about the end of the first week in June, we could force a vote, which would still probably be in time if, if we can make that as a that's our fail safe if we can't just get people to do the right thing for the right reasons.